everybody. Welcome to GDPG. Wow, I'm already fumbling over my words. Uh, but we're doing the Banner Saga. Saga! Banner yeah. Saga Saga. All right, so this uh, this is probably going to be the first one that gets uploaded, right? Uh, well, I, hopefully, the way that it's going to work is we're going to be releasing one of each. So what's happening is Nick and I are playing, Nathan and Gigarius are playing, or Tony. Intangible and Tony, uh, whatever. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And Rachel and uh, Jen are playing, uh, so we're doing three playthroughs, yes, right? And yeah. we're all playing it with a different style. And this Correct. is in celebration of the Banner 2 coming out very soon. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yes. So uh, Nick and I are playing the pragmatic playthrough. Everybody is a tool, and we will use them accordingly. <laughs> we're not trying to be assholes. We're just <laughs> trying to survive in a world that wishes death upon us constantly. Uh, Nathan and Tony's playthrough will be the the... I don't know. The douchebag douche playthrough. Yeah. They're just going to be assholes to everyone all the time. And then uh, uh, Jen and Rachel are running the Mother Teresa playthrough where they try and just keep as many people happy and healthy and safe <laughs> as possible. And that's going to go swimmingly. Oh, yes. Uh, Nick and I are expecting that we're going oh, to be yeah. the only ones that actually complete oh, yeah. the game. Because we're making the right choices, <laughs> not, the, not the emotional decisions. Anyway, uh, let's, let's just dive right in here. So, new game. The story in the Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. That you is, know, that is a I, big old X. Oh, and was that just to like close that, or was that to skip I, the I didn't, cutscene? I didn't actually click it. Oh, okay. No, I've never skipped the cutscene. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. I love that about this game. It's it's crazy too because it's one of those things that doesn't really change anything in the game, at least not for the first game, right? But, there's but no it's day and night cycle, right? And it's, it, just, it's just this ominous thing that you're like, oh, but why, <laughs> why? God, the music and the art in this game—it's like if if Disney did an RPG. I, I absolutely lo love the art of the game. I think my only complaint as far as the art goes is uh, some of the, the like, close-up... Oh. oh, I just realized he's talking. <laughs> yeah, we can be quiet. ...of the trade cities on the wild human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to... They made the implication that they don't know how long it's been like that. They said several days ago, but they're not sure. <laughs> with the implication that it could have been... forever. <laughs> That's a really good point, actually. Yeah. Especially Varl, in that time, you wouldn't since, have a way of gauging. Yeah, and the Varl seem... I don't, I don't want to say that the Varl are immortal, but they kind of are. It doesn't look like they die of old age. They, they basically are. I think they... They age. They, like, there are older and younger Varl, but I don't think they die of old age. Well, that's... I mean, that's the premise of one of the characters. Is yeah, He's uh, like, I want to see how long a Varl can naturally yeah, live for. I don't, I don't know how long a Varl lives. Let's find out. <laughs> Just the sheer concept of it too is—is is this this is the only time that we see like a proper animated cutscene too, right? The um, rest of the time it's still images. For the most part, I think you're right. I think we see one at the end of the game at least. Yes. Yeah. At the end. Of the, well, I mean, the boat moves, but I don't know that anybody else does. Yeah. I, it's been so long that I played this, I barely remember. It's tough to say. All right, there's, here we there's go. There's so many good cinematic moments where they could have had the animated sequences, oh, sure. too. It's like, I don't remember if it was my imagination or if exactly. it was... All right, so let's uh, let's charge right in here. I am a big fan. Uh, when I play through this game, uh, I always play using parties that just consist mostly of Varl and then probably Rook. Uh, it's yeah, just, it's just yeah. the style that I use. It's not particularly mobile. It's not particularly... Uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to assume that those of you who have played this game have 
played it before, or those of you who are watching this have played this game before, and if not, then you'll learn how the combat system works just by watching us, not by watching us do some tutorial. And, and we'll probably talk about it as we go through exactly. it anyway. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just... Well, I can't just break that guy, but now I will. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so my question to you is, mm -hmm. I, I tend to play exactly the same way, actually. Yeah. I prefer the Varl. Um, is it because they are generally the bigger damage dealers, or is it because, uh, or, or I guess, what's the reason? The reason that I personally like the Varl over uh, the human characters is because uh, my strategy revolves around uh, two factors. The first factor is uh, willpower and exertion being like the only way that you can properly, effectively uh, deal damage in this game. Mm -hmm. And the other thing being that armor break is really, really important. So what I'll do is I'll have two of my Varl set to have armor breaks that are like four or five, so that way when you stack willpower on them, they break seven or eight armor a hit. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, you have your next couple of Varl come in who have lots of, of willpower as well, and their job is just to deal as much damage as possible. So you set up like a two-wave strike where the first wave deals a little bit of damage to the armor, and the second wave just decimates them, and then from there, it's just clean up. It's hilarious, because I play the same yeah. exact game. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 not particularly like health efficient and like if you decide to How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched, watched man and bar slaughter each other, even before the dread Jeez. Who killed them? Because looking at that artwork it looks like humanity did. It, right? That's that's kind of what I took away from it, too. Chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families Certainly didn't seem to be borrowed. gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his last. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. <laughs> <laughs> I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight, and I'll gladly send you on your way with Doppler King's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. <laughs> Only the sun has stopped. Everything else just <laughs> continues. <laughs> Or, All right. or starts moving if you consider the dredge. By a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall, he cuts to the chase. All right. Eirik, steward of Strand. I manage the governor's business. Ubin, isn't it? Oh, okay. This, this is you. Uh, uh, we're just here for the tithe, right? Yeah, yeah. We're just here for the tithe. I'm sure you'll get it, if not more. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... What yeah. did you have in mind? What did you have in mind? Scafflings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. I was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. All right, Eirik, lead the way. I think that initial dialogue doesn't really have much uh, no, all weight. Three, all three always lead yeah. to the same result. <laughs> Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Odd, I'm not in the mood today. For... For what? Talking to an idiot. <laughs> the scaffolding's chieftain bled out an hour ago, Hods. When you try to tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. I don't talk... They don't talk to me. Uh, I don't have the patience for this. Hod sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, wait, just just buy one of these. If everybody thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? Well, if we intimidate him, we don't have to pay him, Precisely. so... <laughs> he motioned to Gunolf, your enormous bodyguard who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. God, sorry, <laughs> laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scaffolding? <laughs> Nobleman up by the east wall, but that was months ago, last I know. Hod skulks away with a wave of Irik's hand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Are we done here? Gunolf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No, just bought them while you were walking around. Why? <laughs> they look good. I'm glad you care. <laughs> that man of yours seemed unreliable at best A blind dog wouldn't trust Hod But he got used to be a scoffling If they're licking their wounds They've probably gone to old haunts Not new ones Nobleman is a mead hall Best I can tell the name's ironic Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these skulls in the ground I'm going to find him I'll meet you there 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm after this yeah. one down here. It's not up to me. Just remember, make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. Good. Handled efficiently, and we didn't have to pay him. Right. Uh, so we'll just go to the meat house. You arrive in front of what must be Nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appear, or Eric appears with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out. Eric says over his shoulder, ready? Let's get it over with. Is Eirik the one that's very difficult to keep alive for that's, the entire uh, game? No, that's Eigel. Um, ah. Or Eagle. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. But no, Eirik is he's just in this little bit here. Oh, he, really? He joins you for a little while, but then he takes off and goes off to do his own thing after about three mm, missions. Okay. Um, I have these two and that guy. I am going to put Gunolf over here, and I will put this guy over here, and then this guy will back, back up the flank. Here we go. Uh, Valgard, I wish you didn't go first, but I will put you out here with the hope that the enemies attack you. And I will stonewall. That's actually Eagle's ability. Oh, Interesting. okay. Interesting. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not keeping that character right, so it's kind of a good way of introducing you to some of those abilities. Later abilities, yeah. Not yeah. only that, it's also like the single strongest defensive ability in the game. It's ridiculous. He's so tanky. All right, uh, shield banger. Go ahead and break this man. Now he's crippled and worthless. So when I play, I generally go to deal as much damage as possible on as many like different characters so that they deal less damage overall to me. Mm. Um, so that's where the shield breakers generally come in handy for me is only so I can deal more damage to the, yes. the high health characters. Yeah. That's exactly it. And later on with those dredge that get like 20 odd hit points, mm -hmm. it just gets so ridiculous. All right, I'm going to take him over here. Give two willpower to any ally within range. I don't think any of my allies need willpower. I think you used one, but... Yeah. So then my, my next question for you is, so uh, morale is a huge thing in this game. Mm -hmm. When you play, do you generally... are you Have you been able to keep moderate morale? No. <laughs> I feel like every single time I've play, played this, they've always gone yeah. most of the game with the lowest morale yeah. possible. Everybody gets really unhappy because <laughs> like the situation sucks. Our right? world is falling apart, the gods are dead, the sun won't set. Like, yeah, there's bad things going on. I understand why morale is low. <laughs> right? It's from a design perspective, I actually think that's extremely intelligent because mm -hmm. it's using the game mechanics to further tell the story without even saying anything. Now, that's not to say that I believe that it's impossible to end the game with a high morale. I think it is. I just don't uh, know, don't know how. how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe in one of the playthroughs between each of us, uh, someone will will find a way. Maybe. I doubt it, though. Let's see. Okay, so that, that's 10 damage. I don't need to deal 10 damage. Yeah, he already has one only health. one health. You know what? I will actually, though. I will use the Whirlwind ability. Ooh, that is my favorite. That will just... Kill everything. Oh wait, wait you're, you're only gonna hit damage. one guy. Oh yeah, it's two adjacent enemies, not two enemies adjacent to you. So I'll just kill this guy then. Never mind. I like how in this game health is also strength. When I first sat down to start to play it, that was a little confusing to me, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, after just like a little bit of experimentation, it became fairly apparent what was going on. It, you know, and honestly, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree. I You've think you can hit more times. You're not gonna be so gung ho about swinging a sword around. Right, exactly. I, I think, too, it uh, that is single-handedly what makes the tactical decisions of this game interesting. Mm -hmm. um, if it were just a standard, like, oh, you have strength, um, and you <laughs> always deal this much damage, yeah. it actually would be a lot more like a generic tactical game. Yeah. Which is why when people say that the fights in this game are boring, it's because I feel like those people weren't effectively managing their... Uh... Is that going to hit both of them? I, I think so, yeah. Right. Although it'll also hit the no, it'll hit two adjacent enemies, it says. Starting from target and going clockwise. So if I hit this guy... I don't know, let's find out. Oh, got them both. Wow, What's okay. Up? Yeah, all right. Nicely done. Yeah, foes lying dead at your feet would regret ever crossing your path if they weren't dead. <laughs> <laughs> Gunolf is ready for promotion because of course he is. He just killed four people. And there we go. There they are. Gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eirik is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay. A fleet of longships approaches with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well. Vogner. Next, Prevaro kingship. Last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guests. See what I deal with all day long? Ah, things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me. 
the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favor? No, uh, I think we've no, done enough yeah, already. Yeah. All right, then. Do as you please. Time to go, Volgard. Eric er, and Volgard hustle from the meat house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new rivals down at the docks. Cool. <laughs> well, I think that's all we have for this episode. I agree. We will see you next time when we attempt to deal with this massive fleet of ships coming in. Yep. Yeah. See you in the archives. <laughs>